I have been craving some sourdough crackers lately and I do really the ones that I use cheddar cheese in because they taste a lot like Cheez-Its and uh, they're just as addicting if not more addicting so I knew that I wanted to whip some up today and I also knew that for me to do that without my dough getting eaten <laughs> as soon as I make it that I need to get all the little fingers that are around busy so I whipped up some eggs for breakfast and um, I did give them some honey to go along with it. They like either maple syrup on top, drizzled on top, or honey. So I gave them some honey. And then I also made a smoothie to go with everything. So we're having a very light breakfast, but it was going to be very filling. Um, so you don't always have to have a biscuit. You don't always have to have toast. You don't always have to have bacon. It can be something like this just fine. So whenever I do the smoothies, it's usually whatever I have in the freezer I have a mixture of fruits here some we picked and froze ourselves, and some I did go out and buy um, and then with our fruit I do have a collagen powder it's a, um, a chocolate flavored one and so we'll add that to it so it's added protein and nutrients and then I also have some capsules of some freeze-dried beef liver and if you know anything about beef liver, it is very good for you. It has a lot of nutrients in it that, you know, we really should all have liver in our diet in, in some way, shape, or form. And so this is how I'm able to get it into the kids. They don't fight me on it. They don't even taste it in this. And so I'll put a few capsules in it. And then I fill this up with some milk, blend it up, and they're good to go with their smoothie. So while they enjoyed all of that, I started working on the sourdough crackers. And this is a discard recipe. You can use it whatever state your sourdough is in. I am working on a um, starting a sourdough starter video. And I will go in more detail on whether it's discard or active and what all that means in that video. But I did use a discard. I actually used the my sourdough discard that I'm using to make that how to start a sourdough starter video. And um, it is a all einkorn sourdough starter. So I do use two cups of starter for this recipe. Here I'm peeling the paper off of some butter. This isn't a butter that I typically use. Um, but since I get my butter from Azure Standard, they've been out of the butter that I like to use. And so this butter that I have gotten, I don't mind using it, but the paper is always like somehow stuck inside of the stick of butter. And I have to always try to work that out. It's really annoying. But anyway, so I put the stick of butter in the oven to go ahead and melt while I'm getting the rest of this done. So the first sourdough starter that I put in this measuring cup is the einkorn starter that I'm going to be using for my video. And I did have to do a kind of a large discard on it, and so this was a great way to use that up. And then the other one that I'm working with now is my all-purpose flour um, sourdough starter. So here I'm grating some cheddar cheese. It's a mild cheddar cheese. You can use whatever cheese you would like to use. It doesn't have to be cheddar. If you want it more like Cheez-Its, you would probably want to use cheddar, but you can use whatever cheese you'd like to try. And I do about a cup and a half to two cups. You can, you know, play around with it if you want it cheesier, make it cheesier, add more cheese. And then I am going to be adding a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. Um, I do want to try this with all einkorn flour at some point, but in this video I did use all-purpose flour. And then I added two teaspoons of salt. And then that was, I don't know if I said it, but it was a half cup of butter that I had melted, melting in the oven. It didn't melt all the way before I poured that out, but it was fine because when I, I work it like this, it, it gets all mixed in. So this is just um, the butter, cheese, and salt, but there are different variations of this that you can do. I have done this base recipe here, but then I've added um, Italian seasonings, and that was very good. It was kind of like a, a seasoned cheddar cracker, which was just as addicting. And then I have also done like a Cajun style. So I have a video where I did like Cajun pumpkin seeds, and it's with the seasonings that um, 
I don't know if you've been to down south Louisiana, but they have, some restaurants have oyster crackers, and it's like a seasoned spicy cracker that they'll have as like an appetizer. And they're really, really good and addicting, and so I do my pumpkin seeds seasoned that way, but you know, so without the cracker, it's the pumpkin seeds. And so the sourdough cracker with the seasoning, that was, that I just can't even, I don't know if I can describe how good that was. That was, that was really good because I like the oyster crackers, but it was like, I didn't feel guilty eating the oyster crackers because they were sourdough now. And anyways, it was really good. Um, so you can, um, you know, make this however you want to with all kinds of different seasonings and flavors and cheeses and whatever you want to try. Um, I mean, these alone, just with this like basic recipe is addicting enough. So anyways, I fed my starter again. Now I'm working on my dough. I, when I mixed my dough, I did cover it and sit it on the counter between for six to eight hours. You don't have to do that. You can go ahead and roll it out like I'm doing now. Um, really thin in between these, these, uh, parchment papers here. Um, but I do like to let mine sit and ferment on the counter for, you know, quite a few hours because that flour that I added to the mixture, I want to make sure that that's nice and fermented. If you're not doing sourdough, uh, for the benefits, you're not super, super worried about that or you don't necessarily have to have everything fermented for, uh, digestion issues, then you can go ahead and roll it out and bake it. But I do want these crackers to be a healthy version. And anything sourdough that you're going to eat is a healthy version um, that, that you're eating. And so there are benefits to that. So I want to make sure since my kids are going to be eating all of these basically because these don't last long. I want to make sure that they are crackers that are actually benefiting them. So I let the cracker sit covered on the counter for six to eight hours. And I roll this out. And I'm actually making the, these later that evening. So you need to roll it out very, very thin. If you don't, um, it's not going to bake properly. They're going to be more soft, kind of like a, I, I don't really know, like, I guess tortilla-ish. It, or it'll just be like, it'll, it'll be pretty soft. It won't really have that good crunch th that you're looking for. And um, I don't have the whole dough ball here rolling out. I do portion it, get smaller portions and roll it out because you have to have it thin. You have to be able to fit it on the cookie sheet, fit it in the oven, and you don't want it just going out on the sides everywhere. So once I roll it out, I just use my pizza cutter here. And I am just doing some simple little stick shapes. Um, it's not uniform, it's not perfectly even. We don't really care about that. You know, I'm not like making this all fancy. We're going to be eating these literally in a matter of minutes after they come out the oven and cooled down. So um, you can form these into squares and then get like a toothpick and make the, the little... Um, dot in the middle, the little hole in the middle, and that will be more of a cheese it shape. Uh, you know, you can get however fancy or not fancy that you want. You don't even have to cut them before you bake them. Some people just roll them out, stick them in the oven, and then just break them up with their fingers after, and that's perfectly fine too. However you want to do it. Um, but I go ahead, I stick these in the oven, and then, see I have two pans going here because I have several batches. And then um, when they come out, I do let them cool on top of the pan. I keep them in the pan to cool because it does help them to continue to crisp up. And the crunch is very addicting. The flavor is very addicting. And you will, I have no doubt that you will enjoy these if you try these sourdough crackers. You can get um, some salt, like larger pieces of salt, and sprinkle it on top if you want to. I have done that. To us, it was a little too much salt, and so we enjoy them just how they are without it. 